This uh, last session uh, is about uh, person or student-centered learning. Uh, since uh, this is the topic, uh, let me just say the obvious. Of course, uh, there are many and historically, you know, significant uh, ways or approaches to person or student-centered learning. Uh, and uh, there is a vast uh, tradition, uh, some of which actually come from Italy, my country, like uh, the Montessori school, uh, you know, treating what people call kids, uh, not as kids, uh, but as a young person. Um, nowadays, uh, uh, and so I personally come, uh, like Carl Rogers, uh, in the tradition uh, of John Dewey, the guy that uh, was uh, heard uh, to say that the problem with schools is that there are too many teachers uh, and too few facilitators facilitator of learning. I fully agree with John uh, if he said that. His work actually was about that, how we can become facilitator learning. So, uh, the person-centered approach uh, from which uh, the person-centered education uh, uh, came about uh, has been formulated uh, by Carl Rogers, uh, a famous uh, psychologist uh, from uh, the USA and uh, one of the so-called fathers, uh, there were actually also mothers like Charlotte Butler uh, <laughs> and of uh, humanistic psychology, that field uh, of psychology that uh, wants to put the person at the center of uh, the uh, you know, field uh, of uh, observation. So, the person-centered approach is a scientifically validated systemic holistic approach uh, with the application uh, all over the world uh, in uh, all the so-called helping profession, which is to say psychology, education, medicine, social work, uh, management, uh, intercultural communication, conflict prevention and resolution, and so on and so on and so on. The specificity of the person-centered approach uh, is uh, that is uh, born uh, in opposition uh, as a, an alternative to you know, traditional psychiatry and traditional psychology and psychotherapy. So, if focus on health and not on uh, psychopathology, on solution and not on problems. Uh, in a PCA, the goal is not to cure, but to empower the person uh, to be proactive uh, in his process of change. Is uh, aim to develop, uh, to facilitate the development of the potentialities of individual, groups, organization, and uh, the process uh, is a process of empowerment, uh, so the people become more and more responsible and in charge uh, of their lives, uh, and uh, we do not uh, encourage dependency as uh, all the fashion, traditional, mechanistic, reductionistic approach did uh, or do even today. So, why so? Because uh, in any approach, I was just talking at the bar with Gary, every approach uh, at the days, uh, and unfortunately they don't make it explicit, uh, otherwise everything would be much more clear, and we could agree or disagree with uh, an approach. A any approach in the so-called helping profession uh, has the roots, uh, the rights, uh, for, from the vision we have about the human nature. And if you have a, a, that vision of human nature, that from that vision comes uh, the theory of whatever, it is in health, of axiopathology, and the uh, theory of uh, therapy. But this is true of us human beings, and no matter what we do, that, uh, you know, in, in the helping profession is often not explicit. But let's say, here, we have a conference uh, of potato growers. I would have to explain, uh, if I'm teaching about potato growing, growing potatoes, and then uh, one day French fries maybe, is the nature of the potato. From the nature of the potato, they send uh, the 
axiopathology of the potato, let's say potato blight, a serious thing, millions of people dying in Ireland for potato blight, and so the theory of therapy of the potato that uh, is all descending from the theory of the nature of potato. So, going from potatoes to human beings, Carl Rogers uh, postulated uh, something that was revolutionary at this time. And it was so revolutionary that people were really shocked. And what uh, Carl Rogers said? Carl Rogers said that what uh, Sigmund Freud and uh, Fred Skinner, one of his famous opponents in public debate, or Watson, uh, the creator of uh, behavioralism, they believed that Sigmund uh, and uh, uh, Skinner believe and everybody else uh, that every living organism has an innate biological tendency to <laughs> be aware at whatever level, the amoeba, the sunflower, and to self-regulate. But they didn't postulate that uh, for human beings. The vision of human nature of human beings uh, was very different. Might be, I think, uh, since I was a Catholic altar boy, because the narrative in the culture was uh, that uh, scarcity paradigm. Human beings uh, were inborn faulty because they have, uh, you know, original sin. So, the actualizing tendency, which is called also life, <laughs> organize itself. Uh, in developing the potentiality that, uh, you know, brings any organism towards growth. You know, an acorn falls from the acorn tree, gets uh, into the earth, and has a, a tendency, doesn't need to go to an acorn university, to develop, if it's, it's lucky, the acorn in a full-blown uh, tree and give fruits. Also, human beings uh, rationalize uh, the So, this uh, tendency is not evil, not at all, is uh, directional, constructed, and present in all living things, living things. So, somebody would say already, where is the place for evil? Don't worry, there is plenty of place, even too much for evil, also with human beings. But, in this theory, evil descends when the natural tendency is stunted and stopped. So, like with any other normal organism, if a potato is not in the soil to grow a full potato plant, but in the you know, kitchen it grows strange you know, shoots uh, trying to desperately actualize itself, uh, but it hasn't the condition to do so. So, for Carl Rogers, uh, every person has the innate capacity to become a fully functioning person. What he meant? He meant uh, something closer to Abraham Maslow. By the way, Abraham Maslow uh, did all his work and wrote his book uh, in uh, the Western Behavioral Science Institute of La Jolla, California, founded by uh, Carl Rogers uh, and uh, Richard Farson, one of our, uh, you know, fellow and my boss, uh, because I was uh, and I still am part of the uh, WSI faculty, uh, a little younger than uh, Abe Maslow. So, what uh, uh, they found, that uh, People that are fully functioning are aware, integrated, in touch with themselves, others, and the world. They are, have the courage to be profound, authentic, and they trust. They are creative. They have a good capacity to be together, others, so affiliation, communication. And they are realistic, you know, they can function in reality. They have, of course, a psychological health, maturity, existential depth, effective self-regulation, respect for themselves, and so having more respect for oneself brings to have naturally more respect for others, more, you know, <laughs> uh, accepting of others. 
they are open to experience instead of uh, afraid and, uh, you know, rigidly uh, uh, frozen in a defense stance because they feel trapped no matter what, able to learn from experience. He said, able to learn from experience. Yeah, very big university, the world of experience, but you need to learn from it. Very often we don't. We are not open to that learning. Their personality is healthy, which means mature, fluid, and has not fixed rigidity. It's defending when there is threat and is open when threat is absent. So they have adaptivity, flexibility, and resilience. They trust themselves, their organism, their intuition, their feelings, and their value. They have a sense of direction, purpose, and also leadership, natural leadership. Maybe they would never have a formal, you know, appointments, but then. So, for personal center approach, we see people as being capable in, to be in charge of their own life and problems. They are not in need of us telling that go left, go right, do this, do that. They can develop the capacity to do it better than anybody giving them the recipe. So, the role of any uh, professional adopting uh, this uh, philosophy and uh, this science uh, is not uh, doing it for the other, is facilitating uh, a natural capacity, a natural test. So, how? Provi providing a relational climate uh, that fosters growth and empowerment, enabling uh, their clients uh, or, you know, their students uh, to explore and find solutions to their problems and way to reach their goals. Now we will approach uh, the educational. Uh, anyhow, for all the person-centered approaches, uh, the research has confirmed the hypothesis. We have tons of research, eight years of research, uh, also coming from other people wanting to dismantle this uh, uh, research, which is uh, very useful. Uh, over seven years of research uh, have uh, confirmed the hypothesis that uh, there is a, a climate, a relationship climate, that, that one is an effective facilitator if basically has a high level of uh, respect for the other, of empathic understanding of the other, and a congruent stance. That is not uh, just authenticity, meaning to be saying the truth, but also mental health, the capacity to symbolize uh, without distortion or suppression one's experiences. Let's now move uh, to education, because this kind of education is based uh, from this assumption. Uh, for Carl Rogers, the educational system is probably the most influential of all institutions, outranking the family, the church, the police, and uh, the government in shaping the interpersonal politics of the growing person. <coughs> so, person-centered, or other times it's called student-centered education, uh, have an a application uh, that uh, goes from kindergarten for people that are three years old uh, to university level and uh, uh, continuing education, uh, adult education. Malcolm Knowles, one of the best authority on uh, continuing education, is a uh, With this uh, uh, for example, little kindergarten uh, students, uh, uh, elementary school students, uh, in the student center approach, uh, the most important goal is not to take away what they na naturally possess. You know, it's not giving something. It's not to rob them of what? Of some of the most precious uh, things uh, human beings uh, have, which is uh, uh, the innate curiosity, 
the excitement, the joy of learning. And so, don't rob them of the joy of, of learning and support them in developing their innate potentialities. In uh, adult uh, students, uh, you know, that uh, learn to become doctors, uh, teachers, architects, engineers, economists, uh, we see personal growth uh, as fully part uh, of professional growth. If there is not uh, personal growth, uh, the professional, in our terms, is dangerous. In a helping profession, we think that if you preach what you don't practice, if you don't walk your talk, you're really dangerous. And you can inflict damage, although you don't want to do that. Because you are asking people to open themselves to something that you're not willing to open yourself. So, you, you really are incongruent, uh, dangerous. So, personal or student-centered education goal is to protect and promote the innate capacities and the potentiality, and our ambitions are high. We want to graduate people not only to get the skilled jobs, which is important indeed, but to graduate them to life, as a fully functioning person. That's, you know, the ground where they would be solid in dealing with reality, personal life, family life, professional life, but also as citizens. So, uh, student-centered learning is a personal, personally significant kind of learning, and the goal uh, is to create a participatory uh, you know, uh, possibility in all the aspects of learning. I would make uh, some example to explain uh, what I mean by that. But uh, all, you know, point to self-responsibility. And then a, cl a climate of trust uh, where curiosity, curiosity is cultivated and the natural desire to learn uh, is nourished and enhanced. Helping students to achieve results they find meaningful. <clears throat> uh, sustaining the excitement and the self-initiating discovery, so supporting creativity. And also, let's talk about the teachers. The teacher's person. You know, he <coughs> organizes the school that don't see the teacher's person and then don't see the need of teachers to grow in the process of their profession. Uh, so, for teachers, it's fundamental in order to be good teachers, to be fully supported in be passionate about the joy of learning. You teach, <laughs> you know, by example. And if you really feel that learning is a juicy adventure, that you want to learn as much as you want to chew on a rich, flavorful fruit, then you really convey much better than many words the point. So, the point is also to facilitate awareness, so inner processes. So, Carl Rogers, uh, uh, as I mentioned quickly, see that uh, the uh, classroom uh, is a place uh, to support and facilitate the, the actualizing tendency, the vitality of the students, uh, and uh, the teachers need uh, to be uh, able to really uh, express in their relationship with their students and among uh, fellow teachers uh, uh, relationships that are congruent, uh, that are genuine, that are authentic, uh, and that uh, they respect others, not as a formality, but uh, as uh, fellow human beings.
you cannot communicate this to students uh, just uh, by saying or writing uh, with the chocolate. You know, you have to embody it in a day-to-day -day experience. That's why it's so fantastic uh, to be a person-centered uh, uh, facilitator of learning. <clears throat> so, you know, there is no way uh, this uh, can hardly be conveyed uh, if the teacher, you know, is uh, <laughs> pointing and all that. And so, it should be clear that it's not a technique. It's a way of being. You cannot cheat on this. You know, people feel it. You are or you're not. Thank God. Uh, uh, the research show that uh, if uh, the student believes uh, that the teacher, the so-called student and teacher, is for real, they have better results. We go to more of that. What are some of the results? You can find this all in the, uh, you know, more in depth uh, with the research materials uh, that are for this specific presentation. And if you Google, <laughs> you find the tons uh, of this material. Teachers that are trained in student centered education are better able to apply their learning in the classroom. Uh, there is a direct uh, positive relationship uh, between teacher and student-centered behaviors uh, and their students' learning uh, and even uh, score achievements. Then uh, uh, there is better result on attendance. Uh, students are less uh, uh, absent from the classroom. I remember uh, Reinhard and Anne-Marie Tausch in Germany did their research, now Anne-Marie is dead, but their research on 50,000 German teachers put in a, a recording and see who was speaking the most. If the teacher was the person speaking the most, that wasn't so good for student-centered teacher. In the classroom where they are student-centered, the students have more space to interact. For example, and so uh, they have also positive result on the mental health. Students have more, you know, uh, self-esteem. They improve their self-concept because they are treated with respect, real respect. They are not humiliated. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, it's interesting. The research said that the school principal that applied this uh, uh, approach, uh, this philosophy. Uh, they have more teachers that are affected student centered, of course, uh, because uh, where teachers uh, go uh, against uh, the boss uh, will, you know, uh, there are less uh, result, uh, and the students uh, show better result. So, if the whole institution uh, promote, uh, you know, uh, trust, uh, respect, uh, uh, exploration, and uh, creativity all the better. You don't need a, a tons of research, any intuitive, uh, uh, you know, a person understand that, of course. <clears throat> it's like saying that in a democratic society, people are more free to express their belief the system. Well, <laughs> let's do a lot of research. That's important, but uh, we knew that. Uh, so, creativity. Uh, Reliability and being constructive, a rich and full life, uh, the fully functioning individual that we were saying before means uh, that uh, this, uh, uh, you know, is a really impacting society, not just uh, student uh, personal lives. I go fast uh, because uh, I still have a, a, a quite a lot of things that, that I want to share. So, the purpose of person center or student center education is to protect and promote the person innate creative capacity of learning from their experience. Instead of that, write ten times, you know, learning from your phenomenology. That's what life is all about. That's the adventure of humankind on this planet. If, you know, we didn't start and went to the universities, uh, a cave university, uh, to promote 
wholeness and integration of the individual by focusing on the student's personal growth and development uh, to promote the development of a created and com competent members society able to contribute effectively to the life of their communities. What is the role uh, of the student, uh, of the teacher in uh, such uh, philosophy? A real commitment uh, uh, to facilitate learning uh, and uh, to a democratic management uh, in a explicitly, uh, value explicit uh, education project to share her or his passion about learning, to be able to relate to the student with respect, empathy and congruence, and with so, to be capable to be in touch with oneself, the students and the member of the teacher's community and the community in which the school, and also to the world that would be a responsible and sustainable citizen, we say today. Wanting and having the needed skills and attributes to be a facilitator of learning, so I need to do upgrading of, you know, continuing education, uh, you know, uh, supervision, uh, and to be an effective mentor for the students uh, and uh, to foster their creativity and autonomy. This uh, seems so nice, uh, but it's pretty hard at times uh, for teachers, uh, traditionally trained to be teachers, do this and uh, this and uh, that, to lead uh, and trust the process uh, and to have uh, trust uh, that the students uh, will do something that I don't think uh, they should do, you know. But can I trust the process? Instead of reprimanding uh, all the time uh, and being having that. Uh, and so, also to help the students with their personal and social skill. Uh, we know also something about Italy. Our institute has uh, trained uh, about 30,000 teachers, uh, uh, Italian teachers from uh, uh, state schools, uh, and about uh, 1,200 uh, school principal. We have a, a project that, that Irene actually is the director of all this uh, small uh, time limited project of training, which is called teacher effectiveness or parents' effectiveness, uh, that uh, a colleague of uh, Carl Rogers, you know, Carl Rogers, Devil, Thomas Gordon. Okay, so, learning to take responsibility, if I'm a student, learning to take responsibility for my personal development. To be interested in uh, developing social skills uh, in problem solving, learning how to learn, you know, the process, learning from mistakes, uh, what usually we learn uh, to hide and not to be punished, willing to contribute uh, to a cooperative and tolerant uh, school ethos, able to learn how to relate to oneself, others, uh, with respect, uh, empathy and congruence. This is uh, what we derive from research. What are person-centered practices? Oh, but, well, it's uh, something that combines the person-centered thinking or theory with the person-centered planning. So, you have to plan it for all of this. It's not just, uh, uh, you know, haphazard. Uh, so, I don't know, I'm going to repeat the trust, uh, transparency, and understanding, but uh, planning, it means uh, not top-down, uh, but, you know, involving all the stakeholders. Not uh, to be dictated uh, by the will of the students and the dictatorship of the students. No, there are some, uh, uh, you know, things, but we decide together that, uh, and uh, we experiment, and we learn uh, from failure. I'll describe some of these uh, actual uh, things, uh, projects. Education. Together with family and culture is one of the fundamental building blocks of the social construction of reality. It's Zucconi here that is right. Um, education is uh, one of the main narratives. Uh, I, I want to say because Carl Rogers didn't mention, uh, 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 you know, social construction of reality because then it was not uh, a concept. Uh, it would be Bergen and Luxman in '68 in Germany actually creating. Uh, the field uh, uh, 
of uh, uh, sociology of knowledge. Uh, but he was talking about the construction of experience, uh, individual and societal constructive experience. E education is one of the main carriers of value, and value can be implicit and explicit. I'm sorry, I repeated ten times, but uh, when I was writing that this. Uh, so, in person-centered education, values are made explicit to facilitate students to have a critical and proactive role and effective training to become fully functioning members of the police. It includes me to allowing disagreement and expressing disagreement without punishing people to disagree with me. So, I think, uh, for example, that what we do as World Academy, World uh, University Consortium, and also my institute, were the three entities first uh, to uh, endorse uh, and uh, actively promote uh, the Poznan Declaration. What is the Poznan Declaration? Something that uh, when you know about it, you don't, uh, I hope uh, your institution uh, would endorse. Because uh, it's a call to all the educational institutions to teach ethics in their course. And uh, so, uh, the the research uh, is uh, really encouraging, <coughs> uh, and uh, this uh, school principal uh, said, we believe that students learn by doing, and they are the most engaged when they are doing, uh, you know, self-directed activity. The goal here is for students to have the ability to think uh, critically, communicate uh, clearly, with an advanced level of preparedness for the academic and career paths that await them beyond those walls. Now, let's have a few examples of what we're talking about, you know, the nitty-gritty. For example, at our institute, that is an institute that was founded by Carl Rogers, I was very young then, and Charles Devonshire, and is in several we have, uh, you know, for example in Italy, we are a postgraduate institution. Our degrees uh, of, we call it uh, specialization, uh, for example, to doctor and clinical psychologists, they study four years after their doctorate to become psychotherapists, for example. We have a co-manager, we have a facilitator of intercultural communication. but. Uh, we don't see that as a course, a postgraduate course. We see this from the very beginning is a learning community. And we select people, you know, to enter in this community that already have shared value, their competitive value. And, you know, we don't want to force a value uh, to anybody. And so students and professors, we call ourselves staff, uh, create a facilitate climate. And the fundamental assumption, there is no professional growth without a personal growth. So a lot of hours are just encounter group, labs, self-directed activity. And how we have examined, that was harder to convince the Ministry of Education that it was more scientifically valid than traditional exam. The students have to write their self-evaluation present their self-evaluation in their training group, maximum 20 people, and receive the feedback of every fellow uh, student, participant, and also the feedback of every uh, professor, you know, staff. The only person that can express it publicly is me, because I'm the person that has to sign uh, their diploma, and I don't want uh, to label anybody with critique, I give them in private, uh, because I want this. Uh, and so, they, my ideation uh, is sometimes uh, they fight, uh, it's like, no, no, and, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's a much more reliable, uh, sometimes we find that, that they are too harsh on themselves, so that, uh, in our opinion. Uh, and, uh, well, the students uh, give themselves uh, the grading, but they give us the grading, not only the professor, they write anonymously 
suggestion for each professor how they appreciate that what is good and suggest them for what that we can improve. They evaluate every single staff, also, uh, you know, staff uh, like secretary. They evaluate uh, the dashes, you know, and all the evaluations then we discuss it uh, and we have a restitution. This critique uh, we share and this critique uh, we try to do better in this and this way and this critique uh, we do not share, you know, that's important that you made it, but uh, we do not think that we have to change uh, for this and this reason, or sometimes uh, we can't. Uh, the ministry doesn't allow us uh, to you choose uh, any, you know, uh, mm. uh, internship uh, location because they have uh, <laughs> to approve uh, the internship location and stuff like that. Uh, if uh, somebody cannot pay tuition, uh, we have a discussion uh, and we're flexible about uh, paying tuition. We have uh, scholarship, uh, but uh, when we do, for example, a, uh, a you know, a congress, a conference, uh, we raise some money, not great money, unfortunately, from, uh, we don't want it from uh, uh, pharmaceutical firm, but the from you know publishing house, we give a hundred percent of that uh, in prizes uh, for best uh, presentation or best uh, research project. But one ah, and the students can call a community meeting and discuss a problem that they feel anytime they want. An institution uh, that I have nothing to do, but I think is a great institution, uh, is uh, this uh, younger generation that would change Ukraine, uh, that uh, my friend and colleague uh, and uh, member of uh, the Academy uh, Board of Trustees has created, Bogdan Harrismith, the uh, charitable foundation. And I know so many other people. I'm honored even to know the president of the association. But uh, that's another story. Anyhow, I went to Ukraine uh, with, uh, and I met uh, these people, enthusiastic, uh, proactive, fantastic. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> no. Uh, so, uh, Bogdan generously put a lot of money to create this foundation uh, and uh, supporting uh, young people to go abroad, uh, learn from uh, existing uh, excellency, you know, best practice, come back to their country, Ukraine, uh, and be proactive uh, as a uh, Ukrainian professional and citizen. But uh, with great results, uh, just to show you, one of their people has become a Ukrainian uh, vice minister of ecology and they entered the political, the industrial, the economic, uh, the educational system. Fantastic. More power. I think uh, somebody, I don't know, I don't remember, has even uh, some brochure, younger generation that uh, would uh, change the Ukraine, uh, they, you're welcome to have one. <coughs> but very quickly, uh, just uh, other, you know, this is uh, the City of Arts and Technology, is a high school in San Francisco. The curriculum, strong emphasis on social justice identity. So, social justice teams uh, are used uh, to empower their students and encourage them to think critically. Uh, there is uh, an interdisciplinary dimension uh, and the students uh, can uh, are empowered to do their project, uh, to do some uh, uh, activity in their uh, community about uh, you know real issue of the day racial profiling death penalty uh, you know the issue of racism and uh, how uh, pregnant women in jail are uh, living their the immigration uh, and things like that and in uh, Antioch uh, the Dozier Libre Medical High School is a uh, 12th grade students uh, uh, that uh, go critically on medical ethics uh, 
and uh, see ethics uh, across uh, all the disciplines. Uh, they had a project uh, reading the mortal life of uh, Harrietta Lux, uh, this uh, African American woman uh, that had her body used uh, to harvest uh, uh, self sand, sand without her concept or her family concept. Uh, in another student that uh, learns about uh, eugenetics movement and medical experimentation in physics they are developing design and building a, a device uh, to address disability I mean real hand-on uh, projects uh, learning from doing and uh, I have uh, several others that uh, they are all in the uh, uh, in the uh, Slides, uh, but uh, I ran uh, short of time. Eh? Right, they are on the website, free for all. Uh, so, since uh, the research uh, showed that person centered education helps a student to achieve academic goals, uh, and more important, to develop their potentiality and to be more in touch uh, with themselves, others of the world, uh, what uh, our friend uh, reminds us is also. UNESCO go to the classic to know, to do, to be. Now they add uh, also to be in a community. Uh, I think uh, the research we have is impressive, but we need the further research, don't we all need? And especially what we lack. I think uh, we need uh, <coughs> longitudinal studies uh, that show the impact uh, of this kind of approach uh, that is not only the only one but the many approaches in this direction to see the impact uh, to follow people all across the lifespan uh, like uh, in the health uh, you know, field uh, you follow people for their lifestyle and uh, since education uh, plays a social construction uh, role in what is reality, we are all united in this uh, uh, you know, effort uh, to create a, a more an effective, more person-centered way to educate uh, our best resources, our children. And uh, the retooling, uh, I think, uh, has to start from the frame of reference, from the value, and uh, to create a new paradigm, we need to be all together, not just experts on education. That would be a mistake. If the university knew how to reform themselves, uh, they are not stupid, they would have already done that. But uh, as I said before, there are so many issues. One is power, <laughs> for example. So, uh, since uh, we really need uh, more and more urgently to protect uh, and promote uh, human and environmental capital at every level, uh, I think uh, that uh, what uh, we have done uh, without uh, money, <laughs> but a lot of goodwill basically, is to create this project, uh, the World University Consortium, uh, and uh, what is different uh, is it's welcoming all the stakeholders. Also, a village uh, without electricity that wants uh, to uh, give a contribution. Uh, what, you know, are the frame of reference uh, of a, a new and more effective education. So each of you here or listening to us or reading us are welcome to participate. You can see it online and in the material. And uh, I think uh, this is a worthwhile endeavor mm -hmm. since uh, in uh, our era, what is being called the Anthropogenic Era by Paul Cruz and another member of our academy, Promoting a process that facilitates the creation of new paradigm and effective ways of education uh, to foster the development of fully functioning person, family, groups, organization, and community is not only of vital importance for human beings, it might be of vital importance for the whole planet. So, thank you and a good luck. for a very important and up-to-date topic and thank you very much that you noticed the problem um, I'm dealing with. Uh, so as, as Alberto already mentioned that, I just want to um, make a short example um, uh, tell about, a bit about our program. 
because uh, taking into account everything that was called yesterday and today, the program uh, seems to cover uh, both the, the uh, complex approach to education, the personal uh, centered education, and also the uh, development of personality. Uh, so um, uh, the program, uh, the main goal of the program is to uh, enable um, young, highly motivated people already graduates from the university uh, to go abroad, to go to six uh, the most effective European countries, and to get a complex um, approach, complex knowledge of uh, uh, um, political development of the country, economical system of the country. Uh, social system of the country and uh, how this country um, lives uh, in harmony with college. So this is exactly the complex approach uh, to the knowledge. Um, these are the things are formed by themselves. So there is not, not neither we select the group uh, nor um, the head of the foundation Bogdan, but students from different regions, from different fields of study. Uh, they form the group, and we and here is the question of leadership. We don't have that one leader of the group, but everyone is a leader in his field. That is, they gather together, they choose the country, uh, they prepare the program, and they um, personally approach the uh, ministries, uh, the NGOs, business institutions. So they organize everything by themselves. This is a good approach for personal development. They feel themselves responsible for what they are doing. And after doing that research, they are coming back home and they are implementing what they have learned uh, both uh, on the uh, state level, on the local authority level, or uh, in the civil society. And uh, as, as you have mentioned, so one of our graduate or alumni, she is now vice minister of ecology. Another one works for the capital uh, authority, uh, dealing with the urban development, uh, so she gained her experience in Sweden. Um, so this is not like high education, but uh, the one big research trip is also um, another approach for person-centered uh, education. And it gives also an, 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 an opportunity to um, widen the overview uh, to get to know another culture, another approaches, and to make best of what can be. And um, another thing I just want to um, point out, um, it's maybe a bit a historical, uh, historical overview of uh, how the educational system uh, in different, um, the, deals with market economy. Uh, if you go back to the Soviet Union, where we had the plant economy, Everything was banned. Both the education was banned. So we had uh, like a state, um, state order of how many engineers we have to have in six years, how many um, economists, how many cultural um, experts. Um, but uh, as everything was banned, everyone got job. So there was uh, from one side you you don't have a right to choose. But you are sure that after graduating, you will be uh, given a job um, somewhere in the Soviet Union. Yeah? Nowadays, with the market economy, it doesn't work like that. Uh, you have to be uh, competitive on the market, and um, if you choose, you have to be responsible for what you choose to start. Uh, that's why um, I think it's very important to have this complex approach to the education. Um, and, uh, the question is, uh, first of all, who are, who are the teachers that teach? Should we educate more teachers uh, than students? Or uh, how can we uh, implement this person-centered approach? Uh, do we um, grow up um, the individuals that are just uh, single leaders and can work in teams? Or do we uh, grow um, team workers? that can be situational leaders in the field of their uh, <laughs> professional field, or do we have uh, to have just robots, like in Soviet Union? You weren't allowed to ask questions. You were a good professional, you had a good quality of education, <laughs> but that education was just to do your job from this point to that point. Don't ask questions, uh, don't express your opinion, 
especially in this opinion, differed from the party's opinion. Uh, so um, we have to think in our um, paradigm and forming the paradigm for education. Uh, first of all, how to combine uh, the cultural cultural differences, uh, how to um, combine the values every culture has. Do, do we have an opportunity to create uh, a universal approach for education, or should we uh, make it more flexible for each and other culture? As we know, the uh, work of Paul Stadley, a cultural dimension theory, uh, he um, pointed out that uh, cultural and society's culture influences the behavior of the citizens and influences their values. So should we take it into account or should we work out a universal approach for, uh, for education? Uh, another thing is the complexity and the reality. Can we uh, both match, make it possible for students to gain an education and feel satisfied on, and feel confident on the market? Or do we uh, just give them an opportunity uh, to raise their individuality, personality, but then we leave them with this open question, what am I supposed to do on the market? Will I ever find a job? Yes, I'm creative, I'm re very ambitious, but how can I gain money to, to survive? The muscle pyramid, yes? The basic, basic, basic uh, um, needs. And uh, the last thing is the planet consciousness that we already talked about and the responsibility. Uh, does the person-centered approach um, that takes into account uh, the question of responsibility? Do we uh, develop the personality and do we stress that uh, if you are a real person, a real individual, you have to be conscious and responsible both for what you do, uh, both for the environment you are surrounded uh, and both for the society you are living in? Or is it just a narcissism that I'm the best and I do whatever I want? So that were my comments on the topic. Thank you very much. It was really very fascinating to listen to Alberto and now to Olga giving us uh, the theory and one co very concrete uh, realization of what is the person aim, the uh, education and even more than education. In a way, of course, as you have heard, uh, this is one of the basic uh, assumptions, one of the basic tenets of the World Academy approach uh, through what we call the, the human center and the humanity center new paradigm. Uh, let me just suggest to look uh, at this issue very, very broadly. Uh, if you take something of what we are all made, and for instance we are all made of some atoms and uh, molecules, uh, then all of them are really identical. All hydrogen molecules in, around the world are the same. Electron, no matter where, is the same to another electron. And by the way, uh, this was so fascinating that uh, Dick Feynman and uh, uh, already Peter referred to him, he was one outstanding physicist and an outstanding teacher, was puzzled by that and then uh, at one time he asked uh, uh, one of his professors, why is that so? So they had a long, long, you know, a good uh, students call his professor usually at the middle of the night and then they start discussing and the other way around, so this was with Dick Feynman. And so one of the conclusions was that maybe there is just one electron in the world just moving around and therefore having all the time just the same uh, uh, property. Uh, when you look at the machines, uh, creation of human beings, you could say that the wheel, and if you reduce just to the function of the wheel, all wheels are the same, or lever is also just the same. Of course, it can have different color, it can have different things, but basically in this very generic term, all of them are, are the same. Now, then we come to human beings. Yes, there are uh, 7.316, I believe, a billion of us, 
at the moment, and maybe a few more, because I think this was the data on August 15, so maybe it's already pushing more. There will be more, and these are just not numbers. While we can say there are so many cars, there are so many wheels, uh, really each human being is individual. And this is what we know. And this is why it is so difficult to do anything with human beings. You don't just treat them in a very simple way. Uh, so when we speak about the human-centered approach, then what we really want to do is to focus on an individual human being, and this is of course what uh, Carl Roger and all of these things has been, uh, all these thoughts have been in that direction. And of course what we do now is we will have more and more of what is called patient-focused uh, medicine. So a person would, a doctor would really look uh, your basic characteristics, your genetic code, and so on, and so on, and try to prescribe a medicine that is just for you and may not necessarily be for, uh, uh, for another uh, human being. Now, of course, superimposed on this, we do look what is in general true. So you do take into account whether there is some epidemic, and you do take that into account, just like in the case of the education, you do look what is, in general, appropriate for the entire population, but a good teacher is always focused on one individual. Now, this is a rather important thing and very important for the profession of the teacher. Uh, some of my colleagues at the University of Zagreb here used to say university is a great institution if only there would be no students. <laughs> no, that is totally wrong. Uh, my colleagues at the University of California who have no obligation of uh, retiring, because this is open-ended, decided to retire and some of them said to me, you know, it's really, after a while, boring to teach them always the same thing and to have always the same reaction. Now, this in a way shows that they are missing exactly what we are aiming here. Namely, each student is an individual, completely different from anybody else. And this is what we have to do. Uh, some of you were quoting uh, Pope Francis. Let me go and, uh, since I'm... Uh, President Emeritus, let me quote the Emeritus Pope, Benedict XVI. Benedict XVI, actually, and the quotation is the one which I learned from uh, uh, Pope Francis, from his uh, 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 famous uh, new encyclical, Laudato Si. Uh, what what uh, Benedict wrote is that each human being is a genuine, unique, a result of the thought of God. And therefore, of course, uh, if you take that position, it means uniqueness of each one of the human being and the necessity of going really aiming in all the respects uh, uh, just for an individual human being to have the maximum out of that. And that, of course, comes very close to what just Olga said now. Uh, our, our former president, Harlan Cleveland, from whom we learn so much, all of us who had the pleasure of knowing him, he was a diplomat, then he was the president of the University of Kabai, and then he was a dean of the special uh, Humphrey, uh, Human Humphrey uh, Center at the University of Minnesota. He wrote a book uh, uh, where the aim was to say, nobody in charge. Actually, when you think a little bit more, is really everybody in charge of one special things, and it is really this, uh, like an orchestra, where all 7.316 million people play this beautiful music that actually then comes to be what we want, this uh, human happy uh, situation where we are all, each one of us, expressing ourselves in a very unique and very different way and making all of this, uh, uh, you know, somehow happy, uniting as much as it can be. And our friend Bogdan Habrelishin 
is really quite correct when he pointed out the solution of my country is Ukraine, but it could be any country, it is really all of the world, is really in the young generation. And let me repeat what I usually say to my students, so I, I apologize to them because they have heard it so many times. I said that they are actually the best educated edu uh, generation that exists. They know more than anyone else, I mean. They had more knowledge now. Each one of them knows more physics than Einstein did, you know, so he is considered to be the greatest physicist ever. And, uh, of course, they, each one of them has their own artistic and creative expression because as opposed to science that is cumulative, art is not. Art is always a unique expression of, of all of these things. So you indeed can do quite a lot. It is up to you. You have the maximum possibility to read since one actually, uh, except for one person here, I'm the oldest one, so the two of us are, are the oldest, everybody is much, much younger, and uh, the idea is really that it is you, the new generation, to really take the advantage of this uh, human and humanity-centered approach uh, as the only answer and the best answer that we can possibly have. Thank you. I would just like to very quickly look at uh, the recruiting process in two companies. Now, employability or, or how prepared the student is, is for the world of work is one metric by which we measure how effective education has been. And, and these two companies that I would uh, like to mention here are uh, Enterprise Rent-A-Car and American uh, Car Rental Agency, which is the top recruiter for uh, uh, fresh college graduates in the country. The next is Google. Now, uh, Enterprise Rent-A-Car recruits athletes and sports people more than any anybody else. And uh, uh, Google believes that uh, in recruiting, Technical skills are least important. It's a technology company. Now, it kind of sounds a little strange because this is a car rental agency. The work there has nothing to do with sport. You don't even need to drive a car there. It's the office work, the paperwork that they uh, need these people to do. But then they recruit sports people because they believe, and it is true that it is a sports person who knows how to work in teams. Because no matter how good a player you are, unless you know how to work, you, you cannot single-handedly, you know, back your team to victory or to score or goal uh, your team to victory. Sometimes uh, you just have to let the other person take the winning shot or to score that winning goal. Otherwise, the team doesn't win. And this is something that the sports people are very good at, to work in teams. And so the Star Rental Agency, which is the number one uh, rec um, recruiting company for fresh graduates in the country, it uh, believes in recruiting the sports people. And then next, coming to Google. Now, this company is all about technology, but then it, it uh, believes that uh, technical expertise is least important when it comes to uh, employing people. And also, according to the head of recruiting, it does not look at how prestigious the institution is from which the person is graduating because in his opinion, people from the top colleges, they lack that intellectual humility which the others have. Now the question is not so much whether the, which college produces you know, humble people or egoistic, but then the point that I would uh, like to focus on is this company believes that intellectual humility is more important than technical expertise when it comes to employing people because these people tend to keep learning constantly whereas when that intellectual humility is not there you feel oh, I'm right, I know all. So that the continuous of the lifelong learning does not tend to be there. And also uh, Google, it, it looks at you know, so many other metrics which is why it says technical expertise is least important. It sees how responsible the, the young fresh graduate uh, can be if the person takes responsibility for the whole project instead of being compartmentalized and saying, now this is my work, this is my division, and this is my duty. So instead of doing that, if they tend to take responsibility for the whole and they are humble and they are team players, 
these actually determine the career and how good, how effective they are as, uh, as, as workers. And uh, I just mentioned this very briefly while talking about contextual education. The grades determine the career only for the first two years of uh, uh, the, the person's uh, tenure in the company. After the first two years, it is so many other things such as, you know, humility, teamwork, how responsible they are, how they can you know, work in groups. Which, which tends to really make the difference. And so I, I would just like to conclude with this. And these I, I mentioned just to illustrate that uh, all that we heard just now on this topic of person-centered education from Alpha to Evo and uh, all are so important. It is uh, the subject is just the occasion. What the real subject is the student, the person. Thank you. Thank you.